Слава Україні! Glory to Ukraine! Today we had our 15 and we are starting our traditional briefing. Welcome at the Military Media Center, the only communication platform by the security and defense forces of the armed forces of Ukraine. We are starting our traditional briefing on the operational situation on the security situation in Ukraine. Today you will be briefed by Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Hanna Maler, Deputy Head of the Main Operations Directorate of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Brigadier General Alexei Hromov, Acting Director of the Implementation Planning Department of the Main Directorate of the National Guard of Ukraine, Colonel Mykola Urshalovich, as well as representative of the Central Scientific Research Institute of the Weapons and Equipment, Colonel Alexander Zaruba. Please welcome Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Ms. Hanna Maler. Good morning, everyone. We are starting our traditional weekly briefing of defense forces who stay united on all front lines, including the informational front line. Today we have 295 days of defense against Russian occupants. Our defense forces counter the enemy armed aggression on all front lines during 42 weeks. It's more than 7,000 hours. Our defenders continue to stay and retain their positions in the most difficult directions. But we pay a high price and tremendous efforts. The ground zero of the hostilities are Avdiivka, Direction and Bakhmut in the Donbass. The Russian state did not give up its attempts to engage Ukraine with missiles, aviation and other weapon systems. Yesterday we witnessed the ordinary attempt to engage and shell Kyiv by UAVs, including the Iranian-made UAVs. We are grateful to our defense forces for shooting down these birds and the additional information about these UAVs you will be briefed by representative of the center we included before. However, despite these conditions, we stay strong and we will not give up. Both who are on the front lines and in the reserve know that the enemy has to be destroyed and sent away out of Ukraine. And we have to fight for it. Our goal is to support each other and go along this way towards the victory. I want to thank Ukrainians for their patience and to POW Coordination Center for their work, because yesterday 64 Ukrainian prisoners came back home. These warriors defended Ukraine in Luhansk regions and they defended in Bakhmut. Now they will be treated they will see a psychologist and we also have other recreational activities financed by the Depart Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Russia is fighting on the informational front line as well and information is one of the edge and component of this war and Russia uses the most tricky and the most dirty ways of information. That is why I ask you to remember and to filter the information you use and you see on the internet. Every week we talk about what Russia uses in the informational space. For the most part, this week Russia concentrated its efforts to forecast the imminent energy crisis in Ukraine. They want to accuse Ukrainian authorities and cover their military power as well. 
за наративом про енергетичну And what's behind these narratives? I want to remind you that the Kremlin does not cover their destruction of civilian infrastructure. They do this on purpose. In this way, Russian, Russians try to make our population suffer and hell better conditions during negotiations. And for the Russian Federation, it's very important for them to have a pause in hostilities, and that is why, in this way, they try to destroy the whole energy system in Ukraine. That is, Russian propagandists try to forecast and create panic moods among the population and force the Ukrainian authorities to accept their conditions during negotiations. As for now, the high, the first place is given to the difficult and tough winter Ukraine has to face this year. However, we'll have to go through this darkness and preserve our inner light. After this winter, the victory awaits us. And that is why we can finish everything started by Russians. After every missile attacks, Russia tries to change, to alter the course of war, and they also try to bring us into darkness, and this is what the Kremlin desires to do. And after every missile attacks, Russians try to break Ukrainians and turn us into slaves of the system, as they are. However, it is not worth it, because Ukrainians prove all the time that the freedom is the DNA of our nations, of our nation. And that is why Russia has already lost this war at the very day when it started it. The strategic goals of the Kremlin against Ukraine are the same. The enemy continues to concentrate its main efforts to launch offensive actions in order to advance to administration borders of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. The enemy continues to carry out defensive operations in order to retain temporarily occupied territories of Zaporizhia, Kharkiv, Kherson regions. Russia tries to destabilize internal political political situation in Ukraine through its missile attacks against energy infrastructure. The additional information about this you will receive from the representative of the general staff. And traditionally every Thursday we discuss what have been provided by the Ministry of Defense to the Armed Forces of Ukraine concerning supply. We provide information and figures during the previous week. That is why from December 8 to December 14, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine for the Armed Forces of Ukraine provided more than 11,000 armor vests, more than 10,000 helmets, and more than 75,000 of winter footwear. In addition, more than 70,000 of winter jackets, 65,000 of winter pants, 73,000 of battle dress uniforms, more than 118,000 of winter hats, more than 104,000 of fleece jackets, as well as more than 100 and 40,000 of the my season underwear have been registered and then sent to the armed forces of Ukraine. This work we are doing every week gives its result. That is why we maintain the reserve of 200,000 of armor vests and more than 100,000 helmets. At the same time, we receive new equipment, we 
receive new helmets, vests, and we also change it, rotate, issue, and replace. And that is why I want to say that, as for now, the armed forces of Ukraine and reserve are 100% manned and equipped with helmets and vests. And just about some more figures. More than 87% of equipment, armor vests, etc., is purchased by the contracts of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. 8.3% 8 are material and technical assistance from our partners, and 4.4% are from charity. That is why we close the majority of contracts by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine and the assistance from partners will be the additional reserve for us. And now as for the payments and finance. As for December 13, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has already financed 100% of additional payment for direct participation in hostilities, 100,000 hryvnia, and 100% of additional payment for service during martial law, 30,000 hryvnia. At the same time, I want to say that we actually finance 60% of payments from the general one, namely monthly payment, pay grade, rank, years of service, etc. However, in December, the situation is different because at the end of the year, there are lots of additional allowances and payment <coughs> issues. All these payments are concern the month payment. That is why we performed 37% of payment of allowances in December. This is 37% more than in November. And in general, during this year, the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine has already financed tenfold more costs and payments than in 2022. And the same situation is with the payments for payments for families of Paris soldiers, and we are working on this as well. We also inform you about our judicial and legal victories because uh, we value what our partners and what our contractors do for us. And last week, last week we received a positive trial decision of the court concerning the violators, suppliers, and we received 6.6 .6 million of hryvnia. And in this case, we talk about violation of oil product supply and delivery contracts. The same concerns equipment contract supply violations. That is why, as for now, all suppliers and contractors providing supply and equipment for the armed forces of Ukraine comply with their obligations, and if they violate it, we take appropriate measures. Thank you for your attention. We thank Deputy Minister of Defense Hanna Maler. And now, please welcome representative of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Brigadier General Oleksiy Hromov. Good morning, everyone. Russia continues to wage a war against Ukraine. The main strategic goals of the enemy are to seize complete territory of our state and prevent our Euro-Atlantic integration. The Kremlin recognizes that in the short term it would be impossible for them to win. That is why they try to turn this conflict in a protracted 
encounter and deplete and exhaust Ukraine in order to force our state to negotiations and create a strategic pause and redeploy, restore their troops. The enemy tried to wreak havoc and exert psychological and economical pressure on Ukraine trying to engage by missiles and aviation. Given our success on the Kherson and Kharkiv directions, the Russian military political authority were forced to change their plans and have changes in the plan to seize Ukraine. In the short term, they will try to concentrate their effort to perform a strategic goal to have a complete control under, over Luhansk and Donetsk regions. At the same time, the Kremlin tries to build up their military production rates and perform contracts with other countries. In November this year, the Russian Federation performed a row of legis legislation acts to extend the list of persons who can be drafted for military service. Namely, now it is allowed to draft convicts and those who are in prisons in Russia. However, there are some exceptions like state, betr state betrayal, espionage, terrorism, etc. At the same time, it is allowed to draft those who committed crimes. In addition, in peacetime, it is allowed to serve for those people who have dual citizenship. As for now, there are 6 million migrants, the majority of which are people from Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, as well as Kyrgyzstan, Armenia, Azerbaijan and other countries. Among the general number of migrants, 2.7 million of people, almost 45 percent, are Male. At the, on the temporarily occupied territory of Luhansk region, there is another way of forcible mobilization going on. Thus, during the last week, the Russian forces tried to perform search and rescue search measures in the city of Rovinke for male personnel and draft them to the Second Army Corps. On the territory of Belarus, from the mid-October this year, there is a build-up of military presence. Within the deployment of regional group of forces, Units and other forces from the Western Military District are on military exercises. Russian forces try to involve instructors from the 11 separate mechanized brigade of the armed forces of the Belarus. In this way, the Kremlin tried to use officer personnel and training ranges infrastructure of, the, of Belarus to rehabilitate and to deploy their newly formed units. At the same time, the servicemen of the aggressor state, namely mobilized, have concerns that officers stopped raised their awareness about any information on the front lines. Russian troops are also redeploying their forces in Belarus. We also see the, the movement of weapons and military equipment from Russia to Belarus. Thus, on Tuesday, the enemy redeployed and projected namely on the Machulishchi airfield, three MiG-31K aircraft capable of carrying hypersonic 
Dagger can jog me south. At the same time, on the territory of Belarus, there are no necessary components, air components, which can provide air support of troops during possible advance. As an example, in February this year, just before the aggression on the territory of Belarus, the aviation wing and group of forces, namely one A-50U and 32 fighters, 15 attack aircraft and 77 helicopters have been deployed. Given these data, we can state that, as for now, the probability of possible advance from the territory of Belarus is low. At the same time, the Border State Committee of the Territory of Belarus, starting from March, for, starting from March 1 this year, will try to have limitations and try to forbid the movement of people around home regions, bordering Kiev and Chernihiv regions of Ukraine. At the same time, the representatives party of the government of Belarus approved a legislation to impose a capital punishment for state betrayal and for, for servicemen and representatives of state authorities. During the week, the enemy performed 15 aviation strikes against civilian infrastructure in Kyiv and one missile attack in the vicinity of Veleka Pasarivka of the summer region. During this week, on the east of our country, we had 388 encounters. Thus, in Kharkiv and Kupyansk's direction, the enemy performed offensive actions in the vicinity of Ternovano, Vasarivsk, Kestermachivka, with no success. The enemy engaged by missiles, the civilian infrastructure and the vicinity of settlements in Kharkiv regions, as well as aviation strikes on our troops' positions. In the man directions, the warriors of the armed forces of Ukraine disrupted the enemy attacks to perform offensive assault actions in the vicinity of Makivka, Ploschanka, Chernopolyuka, Dibro, Bilohoryuka, Verkhnokamenska and Spirna. During the offensive actions, the defense forces advanced to 1.5 km to the west of Diprova. In the Bakhma direction, the enemy performed offensive actions in the vicinity of Yakolyuka, Soledar, Bakhmut, Opetne, Kriščivka, Ozarianivka, Majorsk. The enemy also actively uses Wagner PMC personnel whose workforce are former prisoners. Know that Almost 500 wounded have been sent to the hospitals of Luhansk. In general, as for December 4, there have been 3,600 of wounded personnel in the medical institutions on the temporarily occupied territories. Despite heavy losses, the enemy still tries to seize and take under control the city of Bakhmut. The enemy, the enemy performed missile attack against civilian infrastructure in the vicinity of Kostantinyuka, as well as aviation strike 
against our troops' positions in the vicinity of Bakhmut, Khrushchevka, Stupochka, Andreevka, Kurdyumivka, New York, and Punishta. In Avdiivka and Novopavlivsk direction, the Ukrainian defense forces deterred the enemy positions, the enemy offensive actions in the vicinity of Oleksandropil, Krasnohoryvka, Vesele, Avdiivka, Vodyanen, Vestnevelske, Marinka, Pobeda, Novemakhalivka, and Prichetsivka. In the Parisian and, and Kherson direction, during this week, we had three combat encounters, then we engaged by five missile attacks in the vicinity of Novotavrechevsky, Yurivka, Novogrivorivka, Zotokrucha, Mykolaiv, as well as five aviation strikes against our troops' positions and civilian infrastructure in the vicinity of Mali. Then we also performed artillery strikes against our troop positions. In the Crimean operational region, the successful actions by our defense forces, namely in the Black Sea zone, forced the enemy to take some additional measures to enhance their defense in the temporarily occupied Crimea and in the city of Sevastopol. In the vicinity of such measures, the enemy builds up its engineer obstacles and performs fortifications in the vicinity of Hanyachesk. The enemy deployed electronic warfare systems in the Belbek, Vardyjsk and Saki airfields to counter cruise missiles and attack UVs. The enemy also increased the intensity of counter diversion counter diversion, flights of sea coast and other reconnaissance aircraft and air sea aviation systems. Then we also enhanced the counter sabotage measures in the city of the city of Sevastopol. From December 8 to December 14, the enemy performed 41 missile attacks including two by cruise aviation missiles in the vicinity of Hrhorivka, 38 air defense missiles, and one of unknown time. Then we also used 33 kamikaze drones against energy infrastructure installation, as well as 15 kamikaze drones against civilian infrastructure in the vicinity of KU. Ukrainian aviation forces destroyed 22 kamikaze drones. During the week, the Ukrainian artillery performed 309 attacks against enemy installations, including 34 command posts, 24 ammunition dumps, 70 artillery units, and more than 150 on the concentration efforts. The armed forces of Ukraine, alongside other defense forces, do everything possible to stabilize the situation on the east, and we are ready to any course of action during these, the following month. That is why I believe in the armed forces of Ukraine and will win. Glory to Ukraine. Thank you, Brigadier General, for your information and our warriors for their heroism. Now, please welcome Colonel Mikola Urshalovich, representative of the National Guard of Ukraine. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, dear guests, and those who are watching us online. I will brief you on the efforts of the National Guard of Ukraine during the operation, as for December 15. During the last week, the main efforts of our units, alongside with the armed forces and other defense forces concentrated their efforts to deter the enemy in Kupiansk, Klovyansk, Siversk, Bakhmut, Avdiivka, and Novopavlivsk direction. We suffer no casualties at these directions. At the same time, the enemy did not give it its attempts to seize the settlement of Spirne. However, these actions and attacks have been repulsed, repulsed by our special regiment destination unit named after Ivana Buhuna. Despite everyday shelling, 
the enemy could not advance and the enemy suffered 30 casualties, including six KIA. One lucky gentleman of the Wagner PMC has been captured. National Guard reconnaissance officers continue to work professionally on the, on the battlefield. In the vicinity of Novogrovka and Kamenske, the National Guard reconnaissance personnel destroyed uh, the enemy ammunition dump and up to the enemy squad. In the vicinity of Velekia Novosilka, the enemy the reconnaissance of the Special Purpose Brigade destroyed a dugout of the enemy alongside with their personnel. The air reconnaissance of the Pachelsk National Guard Brigade also worked effectively alongside with Armed Forces Brigade in the vicinity of Slovyan di Sloviansk direction. They destroyed the ammunition dump, platoon strike point, 13 tanks, two self-repaired artillery systems and several vehicles. In total, National Guard reconnaissance personnel found 605 targets of the enemy. Our special purpose personnel are also working effectively on the battlefield. Thus, in the vicinity of Neskuchne, special, special purpose personnel destroyed a mortar detachment, one tank, one infantry fighter vehicle and 20 enemy personnel. Mitrovich Nevetsky Special Purpose Brigade, as well as Bogdan Zavada Special Purpose Regiment, retained our lines, our defensive lines in the Parisian direction. National Air Guard Artillery during the previous week provided fire support in Kharkiv, Bilohorivka, Bakhmut and the Parisian direction. During the week, artillery units performed 130 fire tasks to engage the enemy. We have confirmed one ammunition dump destruction and 50 personnel wounded, 34 of which KIA. National Guard aviation to continues to destroy and the enemy and save our lives. The National Guard aviation performed 11 combat flights to engage the enemy and also three for medical evacuation. During the stabilization measures on the temporal on the deoccupied territories, during the previous week, National Guard performed their task at 21 checkpoints and performed search and rescue and counter sabotage, sabotage measures in Kherson and Mikolayev regions. 13, person, 13 persons have been detained, one flamethrower, 9,000 ammunition, 154 artillery shells, 93 grenades and 19 shots for 19 rounds for grenade launchers have been seized. National Guard, National Guard enforcement units continue to perform their measures in the 19 regions of Ukraine. During the previous week, National Guard detained 1,159 1, people, including 66 for crimes. At the same time, National Guard personnel continue to perform counter sabotage measures around Ukraine. At the same time, National Guard units and personnel perform counter sabotage and security measures alongside the National Police and Service Security Service in Moscow Patriarchat Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The mining teams of the National Guard continue to find and destroy improvised explosive devices, search for roads and terrain. National Guard continue to perform security and defense of 303 important state installations and 
national authorities, including 96 of critical infrastructure. As you know, on the informational field, we can also see the information to possible usage of weapons of mass destruction by the Russian Federation. Given that, from the early days of the large-scale armed aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine, National Guard units deployed additional NBC posts for surveillance and radiological survey. As for now, I can say that the radiological situation is stable. Our troops, alongside with the armed forces of Ukraine, allowed the military units and law enforcement bodies do everything possible to, destroy, to deter the enemy and protect our cities and villages, as well as our citizens. Every day when the enemy is not able to advance, this is our victory. However, gained by high price and cost. From February 24, for bravery and heroism during the participation in studies and in the line of duty, 3,600 of National Guard officers have been bestowed with decoration, and 26 have been awarded with the highest rank, the hero of Ukraine. This week, the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine bestowed decorations and National Guard commander also congratulated our warriors. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Colonel Ushalovich, for your information, as well as our National Guard warriors. And now please welcome Oleksandr Zaruba, representative of the Weapons and Equipment Research Center. Glory to Ukraine. Dear ladies and gentlemen, Russia is a terrorist state. With no success on the battlefield, the enemy continues to use its treaty tactics of engagement by missiles and aviation, as well as UAVs against critical infrastructure, residential quarters and civilian installations around Ukraine. This is done to exert psychological pressure on civilians. According to facts we have for the large production and employment of UAVs by the Russian Federation, Russian Federation we can say that the Russia uses these UAVs and has large production and investment in that. The Trophy and Perspective Weapons and Equipment Research Center studies the captured UAVs, and this is done to find the ways how to counter these UAVs and also to increase our evidence base for violation of international humanitarian law by the Russian Federation. Today you can see some trophy UAVs and I want to say some elements of them are Russian or Iranian production. As a violation of the international humanitarian law, Russia uses UEVs of Iranian production and namely to engage KU on October 17 as well as to engage critical infrastructure in Bila Tsarkva. For these attacks and recent attacks of critical infrastructure and in Odessa and Kyiv, the Russian Federation uses Shahed-136 UEV. This is a Iranian-made loitering munition. Procured for the Russian Federation, they have a Heran-2 name. This UEV is identified by specific wingtips, engine, and other details. We can say that there are foreign-made components of these UAVs. Another Mohajar 6 UAV identified by our center is also an Iranian-made. It can capable of carrying weapon system. You can see some examples on the slides as well. In order to exert pressure on the civilian population with artillery and missiles, the enemy also uses a lot of 
Russian-made UAVs. The most common is Orlan 10. It's also a very common trophy. It is used as a artillery reconnaissance UAV alongside with other electronic warfare systems. We can say that the production of such UAVs with no foreign components is impossible. One of the recent trophies we received is Granat 3 UAV. It's designed for reconnaissance, air surveillance, patrol, targeting and unit command control. Thanks to its lightweight, small scale, small size and low cost, as well as friendly user, friendly use interface, it's used in company battalion level. Except for, aside from optical module, this UV can be fitted with other cellular service radio monitoring equipment. Aleron 3SV UV is a close air reconnaissance and surveillance system. Its attribute is an electric engine, flying wing configuration, as well as replaceable payload module. This system is this system allows for aerial and optical electronic reconnaissance with the real-time data transmission through close channels of communication. According to our results, we can say that almost every, almost all components providing photo and video recording, data transmission, GPS navigation in such UVs are foreign made. We can, we can counter this. UAVs and as our Commander in Chief Valery Zaluzhny mentioned, we will destroy them. We shoot them down every day by our UAV systems. However, it would be better if we try to cut the supply lines of components for such drones. We thank our partners for the for already given UAV countering devices. As for now, because of the 2500 kilometer contact line, our armed forces need more. In this presentation, we took a look at the few UAVs used against Ukraine, but there are more of them. However, I want to say that Russia uses these UAVs to engage civil infrastructure, residential quarters and energy infrastructure, and this is a gross violation of international humanitarian law. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Colonel Alexander Zarupa, for your information. And now, after the briefing, I invite our representatives, our media representatives, to the podium so they can see, of, see how UAVs are used against Ukraine and what types of them are used. And now, please welcome our representatives to the podium, and now we can take a couple of your questions. Okay. RBK Ukraina. I had a question to Hanna Mayer. Uh, the thing that Russian forces did not shell Ukraine for a long time, and you know they, they did it yesterday with the Iranian drones. Can you say that uh, Iranian authorities renewed and resumed the production of UAVs to Russia? Uh, not sure it's our, in our competence, but I can say that, that actually I did it today and uh, Romo also said it, because Russian taxes, tactics today is to force Ukraine to accept so-called negotiations so they can have a pause for them and redeploy, rehabilitate and be ready for further actions. 
Може хтось би зміг відповісти на це питання? У нас є інформація про те, що Іран планував постатку? Чи просто загиб? Do you have any other information on Iranian resumption of UAVs? I think it is more of the main intelligence directorate, not for us. You can ask them later. Hi, Hugo Bashega from the BBC. Let me just pick up on this point of the drones because for a few weeks yeah, it wasn't BBC using these drones. So do you believe that there was some speculation that there was in low temperatures in low of of running out of those drones? So why do you think that was in the drone of the drones of the drones Do you uh, is the counteroffensive going to stop? І як ви думаєте, чи зупиниться контрнаступ? Запитання було, чи пов'язано з тим, те, що Росія тривалий час не використовувала дрони з низькою температурою, і як розвивається контрнаступ? Тут це може бути по інакше. Контрнаступ наш? So the counteroffensive, you mean the, the from the Ukrainian side or the Russian? <laughs> Дякую за запитання. Thank you for your question. Застосуванням противникам, застосування противникам як дронів камікадзе, типу The use of kamikaze drones as Shahed 136 as well as the possible поставок іранських дронів. Other drones is actually probable when the Iranian взагалі немає authorities provide them to Russia. However, we have no difference what drones to shoot down and how many of them will receive to shoot. Because our major task is to preserve territorial integrity of Ukraine. As for the counter-offensive, I can say that the, the situation on the front line had no significant changes during the previous this week and uh, there is no secret for you that we perform our offensive actions on the front lines in separate directions as well. As for the results of our actions, you will be briefed by our report of the general staff or during such meetings. There are no obstacles for us to destroy the enemy, however, it would be better if we have more weapons and we expect and hope for the support of our partners. Espresso. I have two questions. First is the concerning the supply of new weapons, namely the Patriot systems. And the second is for uh, fighters. And now uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs Kuleba said that Russians can launch an offensive in winter. And can you give some comments on that? And now as for weapons and equipment, we have already discussed that the supply and delivery issues are very sensitive, not only for Ukraine, but for our partners. And our mutual agreement is that every public cooperation and communication is coordinated. We have two people in Ukraine who are authorized to state on that. It's the, the Supreme Commander Chief, the President of Ukraine and the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Alexei Reznikov. And other representatives are, have the right to citate because if you have information uh, from other sources, please check it uh, with official sources. And now about sensitivity of these issues. The supply of such weapons and equipment is not very clear because different manufacturers can perceive it in different way. And that is why you have to weigh this uh, information from different participants. If we take a look at every anime actions starting from February 24, they uh, concentrated and they had the narrative that this is the victory war. They will 
quickly cease and advance. However, as you know, this their three-day offensive is less than for almost nine months. At the same time, the enemy had to make some amendments and change some plans, uh, strategy and operations. In specific, it concerns the mobilization. As you know, Russia is uh, such a big state and they still cannot seize Ukraine. We are invincible and we have our combat power and spirit, but the enemy has only ambitions. For example, the enemy performed the first wave of mobilization and we do not exclude that the enemy will still try to seize separate territories and several territories of Ukraine. But for that they will need the manpower, weapons and equipment and other resources they are having on their warehouses. And they also try to procure some weapons and equipment from other countries. But we do not exclude that there will be such a course of action, that there will be another way of mobilization and at the beginning of the next year, because at the end of this year, after the first mobilization, the enemy performed conscription service drafting. After that, the enemy will make some changes into their plans and will try to reman and re-equip military units. We have some opinions of how it will be performed and we are ready for this, we perform our own measures. And as you know, the massive mobilization measures have been taken during the at the beginning of the war and from our side, but we also are taking our mobilization measures, but it's not like the enemy, so in a few weeks they drafted 300,000. It is a planned mobilization for us. And there are no any chaotic action and any chaos, and we see no disruption in that. Thank you. I have a question to Colonel Mikola Urshelovich. How many National Guard officers and representatives have been returned from the captivity during the last two weeks? Thank you for your question. It is a very important area of the National Guard responsibilities. So, during our previous briefing, we were able to perform six liberation processes of National Guard officers. We are working on this and we understand that our main task is to liberate our servicemen as alongside with the other defense forces and structures. Thank you. Army Inform, I have a question to Hanna Maler. Given the recent narratives to force Ukrainian authorities to negotiation, do you have any considerations uh, of what plans Russian authorities have right now? I think that we and the whole world do not have to relax because the main task of the enemy is to seize Ukraine. Because if they achieve this, if uh, they achieve this result, they will focus on other states and their expansion has already started a long time ago and the world has to under that, understand that. And the Western countries have to pay attention to it because Russian authorities finance local and loyal parties, they uh, bribe media, and I think that Russians are behind these actions. And the most important is that uh, expansion of their criminal authorities in Russia. And Russia is trying to criminalize Europe. And 
actually is done and the further actions are and will be the military actions. And that is why, despite the success of the armed forces of Ukraine, Russia does not give up its attempts to seize Ukraine. Я запитаю Було сказано, що над Києвом було знищено 13 дронів. Безпосередньо поясните, як це вдалося? Чи це Україна отримала якісь нові технології, чи якусь застосовую нову тактику? Безпосередньо. Пане полковник, я думаю, що... Thank you for this question. Actually, we use every available technologies we have against them, and these technologies are well known for every country. But the question, the issue of efficiency, relates to the air defense usage tactics, as well as how we operate in the air. And I think in this issue, in this area, we had succeeded because we have our own tactics. And that's why we have such efficiency. Do we have any questions? Good morning, everyone. I have a question to Brigadier General. Will be uh, there any suspension in fire assaults from the enemy during the New Year celebration? Uh, thank you, but this is a very interesting question. As for the temporary ceasefire and suspension, I, I think that the complete ceasefire from our side will be only there where we have no enemy on our soil. And the second question is I have, I have to Colonel, you know that uh, it concerns weather conditions, especially in winter, does it affect uh, the UAVs? Thank you. Our weather center uh, performed analysis of UAV characteristics, and according to our results, there are no prohibitions for uh, UAVs to fly during any weather conditions. But of course, there are some limitations for them. However, uh, uh, they can freeze uh, during the flight and it can uh, thwart to use them. But uh, we face some we faced uh, some devices we can, which can hit the sensors of the UAV and they can be used uh, during bad conditions. And actually yesterday uh, they were flying here, so there are no obstructions for them. And I, I can say that they can be used under any weather conditions. Do you have any questions? Okay. So we have a connection of the Herain 2 UEV. And can you okay, say a couple of things about that? I think uh, you can address these questions not to me, but maybe to the main intelligence directorate, because we possess no information about that. However, uh, we have no schemes and versions, but the Herain, especially about the Herain name of this UEV, but you can cover this in your publications. Thank you. We are finishing our briefing. Uh, this is Military Media Center. This is the only platform where the Defense Forces and other structures communicate together. We win and we believe in our victory. See you during next briefings. Thank you.